Hello everyone and welcome to this Power Automate how-to video. My name is Paul Marana. I am a Microsoft Business Applications MVP and independent consultant. I'm going to be showing you a really easy way to process CSV files in Microsoft Power Automate and really reduce the complexity of that procedure. I have actually already written up a procedure how to do this, which works really well for simple-ish CSV files. Um, Manuel T. Gomez has done the same thing um, with a similar technique to me. So it's a well-documented procedure. But what a lot of these um, blog posts, like my own one, don't cover is how to work with quite complicated CSV files that need transformation or have difficult to work with elements. Um, and that can be really quite difficult to deal with in Power Automate. And so you might end up going to use a third party tool to process those CSV files. So I'm going to show you a way that's actually much easier and works with very difficult to process CSV files. And it's using every just tools that are available natively in Power Platform. So um, we'll just get on with it. Let's have a look at the sample CSV. And I'll show you what's difficult about it. Um, so as you can see, there's a few lines at the top which don't contain any information that we want to use. That's easy enough to deal with. But if you look at the third column, which is title, some of these rows are encapsulated in double quotes. And the reason for that is because they themselves contain a comma or they might contain themselves a double quote. The presence of those elements makes it very difficult to deal with when you're processing line by line in Power Automate. Because this CSV changes midway through the file, that makes it even more difficult to deal with. And this is not wrong. So this is an Amazon provided file and the way that they've done it is actually fine. It just makes it difficult to work with. Here you can see some of the number figures also have got commas and double quotes and others do not. So if you open this file up in Excel, Excel would have no problem dealing with this, but it is more tricky in Power Automate. So what I'm going to start with is just a really, really simple flow, which is just when an email arrives in my inbox, if it has the subject filter Amazon session data, then continue the flow. So this won't trigger this flow unless the subject filter contains Amazon session data. And so we'll say only with attachments, yes, and include the attachment content. And in here, we've got a very simple apply to each action or apply to each loop, which will create files that represent the attachments. And if we look in here, here is that folder where the files will end up. So I'm just going to send myself an email. So that will be coming into my email any moment and this flow will execute. Now, obviously at the moment, this flow doesn't do anything particularly useful and I don't need it to do anything useful yet um, because we are not really going to process this incoming CSV data in Power Automate. Let's just check the run history. It ran two seconds ago <clears throat> and the file will be turning up here shortly. So. Instead now of processing this in here, we're going to initiate a data flow. But before we can do that, we need to create the data flow. So if I go to make.powerapps.com, we can go to data flows, and then we could say create a data flow and we'll start from blank. What's important to point out at this point is that you could process any kind of data because what we're going to use is Power Query. If you've used Power BI, this will be completely familiar to you. So you could use what I'm going to demonstrate here to scrape data from so many different sources. And even if you could do that in Power Automate, if it became very complicated, you might just want to get um, Power Query to do the job for you. I'm calling this Power Query. No, they call it Power Query here. I was wondering if it was called a data flow. So I'm going to choose text CSV. I'm going to browse my OneDrive. I'm going to go into my data flow demo. And there is my sessions CSV. It is there on the cloud. So now that that 
is the selected file, we can begin to transform it. Power Query will generate a preview and then we can continue with our transformations. So here is the preview and we can't just work with it like this because we've got no column headings and we need to work with some of these columns. For example, I want to remove this comma in the figures and get rid of some of these extra characters in the titles. So we choose transform data. And the good thing about this is that I'm no expert in Power Query whatsoever. So if I can do it, you'll easily be able to do it. The first thing we need to do is get rid of these rows at the top. So I'm going to say remove top rows. And it looks like we need to remove three rows. They're gone. And we need now some column headings. So I am going to click use first row as headers. And so now we've got our data split. And notice how Power Query wasn't fussed about the double quotes or the quoted columns. It just dealt with it. And it also correctly changed the types of the fields and made them make sense straight away. Now, I'm going to actually undo that step of it changing the types. It is useful, but we don't need it right now. And so from here, I'm going to just do a couple of things that I want done. I'm going to change this column name to get rid of the brackets. And in this column, I am going to remove the double quotes. So I'm going to say replace values. I'm going to find a double quote and replace it with nothing. So if I go back one step, you can see here where it said fish tank. And now it says fish tank without the quotes. I'm also going to remove the commas. And the reason for this is in this case, I'm going to create a CSV at the end and I don't want those things in there. So the rest looks okay, actually. I think it did actually correctly change the types, but we don't want the dollar signs in here. So I'll do it to both of these columns. Okay, so now our CSV which would have been hard work to create in Power Automate, is already looking in pretty good shape. And we could add custom columns in here or calculated fields, and that would all work nicely. The thing is with this particular CSV file, it has no unique identifier. And we are going to need one to have Power Query doing the things that we want it to do. Your incoming data, if it does have a unique identifier, you will not need to add one. So that could be like a database row ID or something or a GUID, something along those lines. So I'm going to say add a column and I'm going to choose index column. And I've got my index column there. If I go back to the transform tab, I'm going to mark this as a key column. So that's got a little key next to it now. And this is just so that every time a new file comes in, it will wipe what we had in the table before if we wanted it to and replace it with this data. So now I'm sort of done there. I'm gonna say next. So I'm gonna load this to a new table. I'm gonna call it Amazon Sessions. And it's going to make all of these fields for me automatically. Now, because the way that I'm going to work this, I'm also gonna tick delete rows that no longer exist in the query output, which means next time a file comes in, it will get processed again. And if there are less rows, than the previous CSV, then they'll just be deleted and the existing rows will all be updated. So whatever's in my table will always have the correct data for the file that's just come in. If you, if you just want to keep adding data on and you've got a unique ID, you probably wouldn't click that and then you'd have a nice store of data in Dataverse. So I'm doing this also in the default environment, but you could do this in um, a Teams environment as well. So I'm just going to say next. Uh, it's asking me for a key, which I thought I put on. Let's go back one. Unique primary column name is index. Okay, so I've specified my keys now and I should be able to move on. 
So I'm going to set this to refresh manually because this is where Power Automate gets involved again. When the file comes in, we will have Power Automate refresh it for us. So if I press publish now, this will do the first importation of this data and bring it into a table in Databus, ready for us to pull out and use in whichever way we want. But before we get into the pulling of the data out, we we'll just let the data go in and then we'll initiate that data going in from Power Automate. So now that our transformation is published, um, which takes a bit of time the first time you do it, um, we can then begin to work with this data in Power Automate. And furthermore, we can initiate this transformation in Power Automate. Whereas in this instance, I've done this transformation manually and initiated it manually. We are going to change the Power Automate flow now to say when this data file comes in, initiate this transformation, and then we can trigger another Power Automate flow to say when this transformation is complete, we'll do some more work with it. Okay, so if I go into my run history back with our super simple flow where we just saved our attachments, if I edit this now, choose data flow, I can choose refresh a data flow and we should see our process Amazon session data, data flow there. So if I just go over to my OneDrive, I've got my sessions CSV there. In fact, we'll leave it there for now because I know it'll work. So now we can start a new flow. But this time I can use the trigger when a data flow refresh completes. So I can choose the same data flow. And the reason that these two things are split, which when you try this out, you'll begin to understand it. Sometimes if the data flow is quite complicated, it can take a while. So it makes sense to have an initiation for the data flow and then a trigger for when it's complete. Based on this trigger, we know when the previous step is complete. So I'm just gonna stick in a compose action so that I can save this. Um, and I'll just put the end time in. This is really just so that we know that we can then work with it. So if I now go back to my OneDrive, I can delete this and go back to my previous flow. And as you can see, this one has got no runs. We haven't run it when a data flow refresh. And so I'm just going to rerun this. And this will now not only save the attachment, which we sh should see appear in here any moment, but it will also begin that refresh. So our file has arrived and the refresh has been initiated. And if we were, came back over to here, we would see the last refresh date will soon update. You can see that it's now in progress, that refresh very shortly when a data flow refresh completes, will initiate. I'm just gonna name this. Okay, so now we can see that our data has in fact refreshed because this flow has been executed um, 20 seconds ago. So from this point forward, we can use standard actions to build something else out. So we can just use the standard list rows action um, from Microsoft Dataverse, and then choose our Amazon sessions table. And I don't need any filters on there for now. And I could just, just select action to make it a bit more readable. And so we'll just take a few fields just to make it Okay, so let's just check that we've got some data. Okay, so here you can see our data has arrived. And in fact, I'm just gonna edit it very quickly include the title. That was the row that we did the most modification on. 
Okay, so at this stage, our data has been imported, the data flow is run, the refresh is complete, and we can see that our data is all there ready for us to do something with. So just by selecting those rows out with my select action, I could actually just go to create CSV and use that output of that select and I would have a completely new CSV just comprising of those four fields. And I wouldn't have to do any manipulation of the data at all inside Power Automate because I've done that all already in my transformation step. We could also just do um, add some rows to a SharePoint list. So create item. And this will take us straight into and apply to each when we do this, which is right. Pick those fields. Um, and that will do. Let's put page view in as well. These actually may not work because they, I think, then I think we imported them as number types, but we'll see. Remember how I set the um, SharePoint list up. And just so that we are not waiting for too long, I will change the concurrency on here. so that this applied to each happens a little bit quicker. Okay, so if we go over to my SharePoint list now, you can see that that data has just come straight in from that CSV file and ended up straight into a SharePoint list. We've also got a CSV that we've just created with one action in Power Automate. And so, for example, we could also do create a HTML table. And I'm going to use the output of the select. So I can take that HTML table I just made, put it straight into the output, save that. So now if I test that again, we're gonna get all of that good information, but with very basic actions, we're gonna create a CSV table, add records into SharePoint, create a HTML table, there it is, and send an email containing that data, all with the transformations that we have applied without having to generate any complicated Power Automate queries. So if I check my email, there it is there. I didn't do any formatting on it, but you get the idea. So that was a really quick overview of how you can simplify um, the import of really any data um, using Power Automate and data flows. And data flows offer really massive capabilities in terms of data transformation, but they do it in a way which isn't complicated to implement. To do some of those things that we've just done in that data flow within Power Automate is quite hard work and using a data flow makes it really simple. And the transformations that you could apply to the data during its data flow phase make it so much easier to use. It's not to invalidate any other method that's previously been worked with. My own method has been very popular, but my own method would fall down at this complication stage because it's not built for handling very complicated incoming data. So I would really encourage you to have a look at Power BI data flows. They're not actually anything to do with Power BI in this case, but you could then use Power BI to report on that data straight from Dataverse. So it really does open up a whole load of options for being able to process incoming data using Power Automate, both to execute the data flow and then to trigger when that data flow has been completed so that you can then move on generate reports from Power Automate or Power BI or anything within the Power Platform stack. So it's, um, I just would encourage you to give it a try and see how you get on. And if you do get stuck, you can reach out to me on Twitter, on the Power Automate community forums, 
and I will be sure to help you out. And if not, I'm sure there'll be another super user that will. So I hope this was useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.